over the past 25 days i have launched two brand new listings on amazon and basically what i wanted to do when i was launching these two listings and the reason i say listings is because one of the listings actually had four product variations that i launched all together the other listing only has one kind of standalone product right now um, but for these two separate uh listings or two separate products i wanted to set out and find what is the most was the fastest most cost effective way to ultimately uh, rank and generate, start generating and continue to generate organic sales as well as reviews, right? So I've tried a lot of different product launch methods in the past. I'll continue to test out new product launch methods in the future and I will be reporting back um, on what's working, what's not working on this channel, just like I do with everything else. Um, and I really wanna break this down literally step-by-step. Step. I think you're gonna find this unbelievably valuable if you're even thinking about launching a product on Amazon. Um, but for this product launch, I, uh, spent, I've spent, in total and i'm still kind of in the process of process of launching because i never want to stop i keep wanting to rank and generate organic sales for new keywords but i'll talk about more about that in a second but within the first 30 days okay i've spent a total of 613 dollars on um both of these products combined because okay, so that's total 613 dollars and here's the breakdown so 14 dollars has been sent spent on google search ads so not a lot but a little bit and i'll talk about that in a second um, $238 has been spent on Amazon PPC advertising. And yes, I've been running Amazon PPC with literally zero reviews. Uh, and then also the remaining amount has been spent on Facebook ads and many chat specifically, um, uh, facilitating full price rebates, uh, using Facebook ads to kind of target an audience and then many chat kind of facilitates. Um, and again, I'll talk about that in a second. I also have videos, uh, going in detail about each of these specific processes, um, on their own. So I'll include links to those either below or within this video, just look out for those in case you wanna learn more. But this will kind of be a very, uh, I think should be a very solid overview, okay? So that's the overview. Again, trying to launch uh, profitably, you know, as efficiently, effectively, as quickly as possible. So this is the plan. This is what I spent. So what is the result? The result thus far, which I'm super excited about, honestly, this is better than I expected. Um, we've generated uh, in total sales, a gro gross margin or gross profit of $1,469, okay? So that's our gross profit, you know, pre-advertising. So when we subtract that advertising cost, right? Again, this is total, total, everything advertising cost to this point. Well, like any business, we're gonna continue advertising in the future. And actually we're gonna scale up our advertising moving forward. But thus far, we've spent $613 on advertising, which has netted us a profit of $856. So the key thing I wanna uh, point out here is that um, not only are we breaking even with our product launch, and that seems to be the goal with a lot of Amazon sellers is, oh, I just hope I can like, get close to breaking even. We're actually profitable while launching our product. And there's a couple key concepts here that I'm gonna cover in a little bit more detail, but right off the bat, I, wanna, uh, I think there's two really big factors contributing to our success. Um, number one is in terms of advertising and the product selection, our mindset is to smart, start small and then grow later. So what does that mean tactically in terms of um, advertising? Well, that means that we are like, okay, how can we how can we maximize every dollar that we put into advertising? Instead of just throwing a bunch of money at like a giveaway service or at Amazon PPC and just giving it a try, we are extremely extremely meticulous and precise in we want to target um, very low competition keywords, products, um, both on Google, both on Amazon, um, as well as being very very uh, uh, strict on our on our giveaways and meticulous with our whole process. And I'm gonna give you a lot of this stuff for free um, to where you, it, it can take you a lot less time than it took us to set everything up. Um, but that, that was part of our success, very precise, meticulous, and really targeting low competition keywords and products, specifically for Google ads and for Amazon ads. And then number two, this is big, um, the products that we're launching are not in super competitive categories. Advertising is an amplifier. If you wanna go into a super competitive category on Amazon, where a lot of competitors have hundreds or thousands of reviews, don't expect to get great results. Don't expect to launch profitably. Okay. The more competitive something is uh, a product is on Amazon, the more time and money you should expect. Doesn't mean you will, but you should expect to pay for that launch. Okay. And by the way, if your product is pretty much similar to everybody else's, but you just have an ebook or it's just maybe a different color, don't expect great results either. Um, don't expect it to be profitable. We took a lot of time and effort and care into really differentiating our products. We dug deep into, um, uh, Google keyword data, Amazon keyword data. We looked at products that were selling well on other e-commerce platforms um, to see, you know, are there products selling on other platforms really well that aren't even on Amazon? That was one of our products. We kind of brought that product to Amazon because there's no options. Um, so we're the only option literally on Amazon for this product. 
for other products we looked at you know here's some designs that are that are that have a lot of saves on pinterest right with compared to all these ugly designs on amazon so maybe we can kind of match the two that kind of mentality not that we did that exactly but that kind of mentality um and then yeah that was kind of the the overview so low competition highly differentiated and then very precise those are all some keys to our success and with all that being said i can go ahead and kind of get into the specifics now so uh step one is our uh, Google search ads. So again, like we said, we didn't spend much, uh, $13.81, right around $14. Um, our cost per click, 20 cents. And the reality is too, is that um, at first I actually forgot to segment the uh, Google ads specifically to target the United States. So for a little bit, they were actually targeting internationally, which was not helpful at all. Um, but I kind of reined it back in and that's why it kind of went up and then back down. I'm not sure what happened. There's some kind of glitch with the system, I think, because I was pretty sure about it. But, um, but anyway, not a ton spent. But it really depends on the product. Um, I, I've talked with other sellers and know of other sellers where Google ads uh, contribute to quite a big percentage or quite a big chunk of their advertising budget, uh, specifically Google search ads. And basically, here's the premise. Uh, number one, I have a whole video on this. So, so if you're interested in really diving deep, I literally walk through everything step by step for free. There's no, you don't have to pay anything. I literally give it for, for you for free on the YouTube channel. Um, and, but number two is basically what you do is you find um, keywords that people, you know, high, high volume keywords on Google that relate to your product. So you identify those keywords, set them as phrase match, and you create a phrase match Google search ad campaign where you target those keywords um, with a really low bid. So anywhere from like 10 to, to 30 cents, per, uh, you know, you're bidding per click uh, per keyword, right? So, so when that happens, you, get, you don't get a ton of sales, but you do get a few sales. And since you can't really track the results, um, you have to kind of track to see, you know, how, your, how, how, this, how the um, ads are affecting your ranking. Um, also, if it's the only advertising you're using, then you can kind of use that to kind of see what results you're getting. Um, you could also include a coupon code in your ads and see if anyone redeems the coupon code and track that way. Um, but I'm really not too worried about it since it really doesn't make up a huge uh, percentage of my budget to really, really dig deep and track, you know, what are my exact results. As long as I know I'm getting really, really inexpensive clicks, number one. And then number two, those keywords that people are clicking on, those are highly, highly, highly relevant to my product. So people are searching for my product. They, they're clicking on keywords that are highly relevant. I can assume that a good percentage of those people are going to end up buying. Um, so that's, you know, that's enough for me. And I love how so many Amazon sellers are like, oh, if I can't track the exact results, I'm not going to do it. Great. That leaves a ton of opportunity for me and everybody else. So keep doing that. I love that mindset. Um, so that's Google search ads. Briefly kind of touched on that just because it's, it doesn't make up a huge chunk. But for certain products, it could be really great for others. Maybe uh, just not, not as effective or just not as, um, not as much ad spend. All right. Number two is Amazon PPC. I literally took the screenshot this morning of recording this video. Um, and as you can see, we, it, it, this is over a 25 day period from uh, October 5th through October 30th, which is today. Um, we've started, spent a total of $238 uh, in a Amazon PPC, which resulted in $1,397 in sales at an ACoS of about 17%. Um, by the way, I started running before we had any reviews, okay? And that just testifies, remember what I said before, we're highly differentiated. Your main image needs to obviously show how you are so much different, better than all other options. For these products specifically, um, again, number one, this product doesn't even exist on Amazon, okay? Uh, it's being, people are searching for it on Amazon, people are searching for it on Google, and there's no option on Amazon, so we're the first option. Number two, for our second product, I kind of lumped these together, and the second product, we're actually getting more sales. There are existing products on Amazon, but we came out with basically a better version, a better um, a better design product. And from the main image, you can see right away that our design is far superior to all of our competition and people are buying ours even with zero reviews. So that's just, a, so again, you, you, you can't just, don't just assume, oh, I'm just going to copy and paste what Sumner did. And it'll work with any product at any time, any place, the exact same way. Of course not. That, that'd be foolish to believe that. Um, we put a lot of effort in differentiating and this just shows how important it is. Like the better your product is, the better, the, the easier it makes everything. It's just less headache. You, you'll likely get less hijackers. You'll, you can potentially get more profitable and better um, advertising results, uh, et cetera, right? It just, it's, it, it all revolves around the product. There's not a magic fix. Like, oh, I have a crappy product that's really not differentiated. Oh, I'll just solve it with Amazon PPC or something. It doesn't work like that, okay? That's the biggest, biggest factor of what's gonna reduce your, your ACoS and get you better results is your product. Um, and some things that can help are your main image, your having competitive pricing, um, getting more reviews, uh, uh, things like this, right? So this is our PPC results. And here's some things tactically that you can do. Okay. Here's some campaigns that we set up. So get out a notepad. Uh, and again, I, I go into a little bit more detail in another YouTube video, which you can, you can check that out. If you're interested in, in learning a little bit more and diving deeper, 
I've also, because of this, because I've had such great success and because literally I can't find any other information. I can't believe every single Amazon seller doesn't know about these um, campaigns. I've created a $20 Amazon PPC course on Udemy. Uh, link is in the description. If you're interested, I literally go step by step by step, every single step, um, almost to the point of getting annoying, but not really, um, to walk you through. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click on the link below. If not, no worries. I'm, I'm here to, I'm here to help and serve you in any way that I can. So, um, here are the campaigns that I've set up that have been so successful. And I use these for my new products as well as all my existing products. And they're, uh, the, my current ACOS with these campaigns is below 10% right now. Uh, and we're generating, you know, fairly good sales, not a ton, but a good amount of sales to, that helps with ranking, generating organic sales, generating some reviews, et cetera. And you can copy and paste these for yourself. So, uh, campaign number one, low competition ASIN, uh, campaigns. Actually there's two campaigns. Basically I use, um, I use helium 10 for this, but you can do whatever tool or whatever works for you. I use helium 10 black box and I try to find, or what I do, I find similar ASINs on Amazon that have, um, number one, less than one review. Okay. So they either have zero or one reviews. Um, so if, if you, if you're, so yeah. So anyway, I find those ASINs with zero or one reviews that are similar to my product. Number two is I find, um, ASINs that have a three-star rating or less. Oh, and by the way, um, what I just said, this kind of strategy, I learned this from Sam or Brax. I want to give him, you know, full shout out. Want to make sure I, I give credit where it's due. I'll include a link to his, um, his, uh, his video, his info below as well is very, very helpful. So I just want to, you know, give him credit for this cause he's, uh, he's an awesome guy. So, uh, yeah. So low competition ASINs, you know, basically finding similar products that have either less than three stars or that have less than one, uh, review total. Okay. Then what I do is I create um, product targeting campaigns. Okay. So I'll create two separate product targeting campaigns that have these ASINs in them and I bid fairly high. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, um, low bid broad match. I take my top 10 to 20 to even 50 top, uh, search most relevant, um, terms. So I get, I take those terms and I put them into a broad match campaign, a manual broad match campaign. And then I bid low somewhere, be- somewhere like between 10 to 30 cents, usually around um, 15 cents is where I start is my bid per keyword. Um, to where basically I don't get a ton of sales, but every time I get a sale it, or every time I get a click, it's a super low cost per click, which ultimately results in a low, um, a cost. And again, all these campaigns work well for all my products, but some work better, uh, than, than others for certain products, right? So s- some products I have the low bid broad match works really well. Others, it doesn't get as many sales. It just depends. And in my opinion, it's worth testing. It's a very low risk way of testing Amazon PPC and literally any Amazon seller can set it up. Um, number three, low bid auto. Super simple to set up. One of my favorite campaigns by far. All I do is I create an auto campaign in a uh, campaign manager and I look at what the suggested bid is. And then I go somewhere between 15 cents to 20 cents below the suggested bid. So anywhere from 15 cents, like literally like just 15 cents up to, you know, um, 20 cents below the suggested bid somewhere in that range. Uh, and if I want to get more sales, maybe I'll go a little bit higher. You know, if I want to get more sales, I'm not really worried about my a cost as much. I'll go up a little bit. And if I really want to be frugal, then I'll go down more toward the 15 cent mark. Okay. That's what I do personally. And it's worth testing. And that's kind of a good, in my opinion, a good starting point, uh, and for you to kind of optimize and, and change later. But basically Amazon's going to find a bunch of low competition products and keywords for you to bid on. So it's going to feed you data and show you, Hey, did you know about these products? and keywords that you can target with your Amazon PPC campaigns. And you're going to be like, Oh, I had no idea. Great. And then you're going to add them and it, your campaigns are going to become more profitable. And then number two, the campaign itself is going to be profitable. So it helps you make other campaigns profitable and it itself is profitable and collects really valuable data. So I literally one of my favorite campaigns. I absolutely love it. And, um, if you want to reduce your, uh, a cost for auto campaigns, one tip is just reduce your bid, right? And then force Amazon to, to try to find, um, less competitive keywords and products to target. Okay. So that's number three, number four, misspellings campaign may have heard of this one before, but essentially we take our top 10 to 20 keywords. Um, we put them into a misspellings generator online. So you can just t- type in misspelling generator, really simple. Uh, you take your top keywords, put them into the generator, hit enter. And what's going to, what the generator is going to do is give you a ton of commonly misspelled uh, words when people try to type these terms into Amazon or Google or wherever, just common misspellings. You take all of those keywords, enter them as, as an exact match, not broad, not phrase match, create an exact match campaign. Uh, and by the way, depending on how, uh, intense you want to get, I, for one of my products, I literally have, um, one campaign has targeted 40,000 misspelled keywords, 40,000. Uh, it took me a little bit of time, even using bulk sheets to upload, to upload this, but, um, it's still worth it. It's very profitable. Literally like 
it takes almost no time to maintain whatsoever. Uh, yeah, it took some time to set up, but it's literally like I set up this machine that just prints money from here on out. That's the way that I look at it. And it works well for me, not guaranteeing anything for you because you know, it depends. Uh, but yeah, basically we're targeting our main keywords. People mistype those keywords. So when we bid on those keywords and I like to bid around 15 cents. So I set it as exact match bid on those keywords. Um, and it helps me show up and I can be the top result for those misspelled keywords and get that sale. And those are sales that I wouldn't have got otherwise. Right. Uh, and again, all these campaigns com combined can give you really great results as you've just seen from my results. Um, and this is just the beginning. Like we're really going to crank out and hopefully get even better results here in the next two months, especially with Q4 coming up, which is why I want to get this video in before Q4. Cause that's going to skew, res skew results. Okay. Number five, uh, Spanish, Espanol, uh, campaign. So same idea, take your top search keywords. Oh, and by the way, this is if you're selling in the United States, because there's an increasing percentage of American citizens who speak, uh, Spanish by the year 2050, I think it's like 40% of Americans will speak Spanish, something like that. Um, but anyway, we see this trend of more and more Americans are speaking Spanish. So why don't you create campaigns in Spanish, right? People are typing in Spanish. They can find your, your ads where maybe your competitors aren't thinking about that or aren't even aware of that. Okay. This won't work for all products. Imagine if you have a book that's only in English and there's a Spanish speaker who's in, that's like their only language, you know, it wouldn't really make sense, right? Because they can't, they're, they're like, Oh, that's a great book, but I don't speak English. Why would I buy the book? So um, so just be wary of that. Um, but they can be very, very profitable. Again, take your top search keywords, um, basically put them into a, an online translator, translate them into Spanish or have a friend, family member. Um, you can hire someone to just go through the list and say, Hey, make sure, do these sound right? Or is this how they would be spelled correctly in, in Spanish? Um, and then you can, they can help you out. Um, if you want to go that step, but you really don't, I, in my opinion, don't even need to go that far. Um, again, really simple. People are typing these keywords onto Amazon in Spanish and you're one of the few people advertising or bidding on these keywords. So you're going to beat your competition. And again, for these, I like to bid around 15 cents to start off with just as a rule of thumb, but you know, I, I, don't, I, yeah, that's just what I do. Okay. Last one, long tail. Uh, this one, I, I, you can really kind of, uh, manipulate a little bit more, get kind of, you know, you can spend more and get a lower or a higher a cost or spend less and get a lower a cost, whatever you really want to do, depending on how aggressive you want to be. But, um, like I said before, be an acorn you know, you gotta be an acorn before an oak tree. Okay. So focus on, instead of going after your top search, most competitive keywords and bidding on those on Amazon PBC, why don't you start targeting less competitive, longer tail, more specific keywords to your product? These are going to be less competitive. You can get a higher conversion rate for these keywords. And it's a lot easier to rank and start generating organic sales instead of bidding on super expensive keywords and wasting all your money and barely getting any sales. Right? So long tail keywords are essentially keywords that have, I think it's technically keywords that have three or more keywords per phrase. So for example, an example of a long tail keyword would be, um, red sports water bottle. So that's four uh, words within, you know, one keyword or one, one key phrase, right? That's a red sports water bottle. That keyword, if you have a red sports water bottle, I would recommend you bid on that first with Amazon PBC before you bid on the term water bottle. They're both relevant to your product, but one is a is likely going to be a lot less competitive and a lot easier to rank for, assuming it's you know relevant to your product versus water bottle. Okay, where a lot of sellers do is they go for the top search most relevant. Go for um, what I like to use is Helium 10's magnet tool. I use their uh, I organize by IQ score. And by the way, guys, I have a, I have a whole course on this, the going step by step, in case you're interested. But um, but I do want to give enough value for those of you who who aren't interested, you know, because I want to help you out for free. Um, I use Helium 10's uh magnet tool. I sort by magnet IQ score from highest to lowest. And then I try to find, um, uh, keywords that have an estimated search volume between 100 to 1000. And then I, I find 10 to 20 of those keywords. And I include those in broad phrase and exact match. So I have three different campaigns, broad phrase and exact with 10 to 20 low competition keywords. These are keywords that have usually in my case, four or five or more, usually four or five, um, keywords, for example, red sports water bottle, those type of keywords, uh, 10 to 20 of, of those in each of the campaigns. And I, I like to start my bid around the suggested bid just to start off with. Um, if you want to be more aggressive and start getting more sales and you're not as worried about ACOS, I would, I would bid toward the high suggested bid mark, uh, for each keyword. And if you want to be more conservative, what I recommend doing is, um, bidding within between the suggested bid and the low suggested bid that Amazon gives you. Okay. Somewhere in that range. If you want to have a higher ACOS with less sales, do that. If you want to have more sales, maybe at a higher a cost, potentially not, but maybe at a higher a cost, uh, then maybe then, um, increase your bid above the suggested su suggested bid to start. Uh, but again, the only way that you can know is actually by doing, um, but yeah, these are all the campaigns that I have set up that are generating these awesome results. I'm going to be adding more campaigns. There's more campaigns. Also, I talk about, um, 
um, in the course that I don't include here that I don't want everybody and their mom to know. Plus, I'm going to find new ones and add those to the course. Um, but uh, but yeah, hopefully this is uh, this is helpful. I know it. I wish I knew about this when I was starting out. Uh, and then lastly, guys, don't worry, it's almost over. Um, lastly, uh, remember I had the Google Ads done, Amazon PPC done. Last Facebook Ads and Main Chat rebate giveaway breakdown. Um, so here's a literal uh, screenshot. Again, took the, the, took it this morning from my uh, Facebook ads account. So you can see, you know, I'm not making these numbers up. These are all 100% accurate. Um, the top two, you can see I basically made two ad sets per listing that I was launching. So two of these are for product A, two of these are for product B. The average cost per message is around $1, except we have this um, outlier of $2.62. Uh, again, I really don't care. And here's why I don't really care about, um, you know, my, my average message being $1.55. So my total Facebook ad cost, as you saw before, is $168. My total Amazon fees, because remember guys, when you, if, if you're ever doing rebates, um, so let's say you have a product that's $20, somebody pays you $20 for, for your product and then you pay them back the $20, right? Because it's a rebate. Well, it, you would think, oh, I, I, you know, I net $0, right? I, I, don't have any, I, I, didn't ha I don't have any money, I didn't lose any money, but that's not the case because of Amazon fees, Amazon referral fees, storage fees, et cetera. So, you, so generally, again, as a rough estimate, it's about 30%, uh, Amazon fees are about 30% 30 30 per unit sold. So you just need to take that into account um, that, you're, that, that um, with rebates, you have to pay about, you know, and make sure you calculate this for yourself because it could absolutely be different for your product, but around like 30 cents per unit sold. Um, so for Facebook ad cost, it's $168 to promote the rebates and it's $193. I have to pay Amazon, um, for kind of for, for the rebates. Okay. Which come, came to a total cost of $361. Um, that $361 resulted in 35 total rebates, no refunds, no cancels. That's just the 35, um, rebates. Uh, so that comes to a, a cost per rebate of $10 and 31 cents. Again, this is a total cost. Okay. Always think about a total cost. Don't just look at, oh, here's what rebate key would charge me. Here's what, uh, uh, here's how much it cost me in Facebook ads. Look at the total cost, which is in my case, $10 and 31 cents per rebate, um, which is, uh, generated a total of 10 reviews thus far. As of today, we have 10 reviews. Um, again, for the majority, we didn't have any reviews and we were running PPC with no reviews. Um, so now we have a total of 10 reviews. I'm going to keep running this until we have 20 total. So 10 for each listing. Cause right now we have five for each listing and that comes to a total cost, total, total cost per review of $36 and 10 cents. And I really bold this because again, the ultimate goal is, is profit. That's all it really ultimately matters in my book in this specific case. Um, but the step below that is, you know, ranking for your relevant keywords, which a, we were able to do using rebates and all these other methods that we talked about where we are able to rate, uh, rank for some of our top, uh, for some of our top most relevant and top search keywords, um, as well as keywords that we didn't even know about with Amazon, uh, PPC, um, and Google ads and things like that as well. It kind of helped us rank for those as well. Um, uh, and then number two would be reviews. That's the second kind of most important thing. And in my opinion, I'm willing to pay $50 per review. That's how valuable they are, at least for the, for the initial beginning reviews. Um, and again, I, I talked to you how I get reviews. Be very careful about how you do that, obviously, because it's very easy to break Amazon's terms of service. The way that I um, get generate my reviews does not infringe on uh, TOS in any way. Some people will disagree and say it's a gray area. I've read through TOS myself. And um, but again, you can watch the video and decide for yourself um, where I go through everything step by step. Uh, but yeah, like I said, $50 per review, I'm fine paying that. That's what it's worth to me. You need to, you need to decide what ranking and generating reviews is worth to you and put a monetary value on it. If you don't know, you know, come up with a number. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we learn. Uh, so in my case, uh, if, if I'm willing to pay 50 bucks and it only costs me, you know, less than $37 per review, I'm happy, okay? Along with all the other results I'm getting. So I found it, I found all of these uh, in total, my overall product launch to be an absolute success. Um, last step, I will be testing more product launch strategies, building and growing an email list. In my opinion, that's probably, in my view right now, that is the most beneficial, powerful way to launch products over and over and over again. You can use the same list for new products. Um, but I'm not going to get into too much here. I will be making a video on that at some point in the future. So in order to get access to that video and all the other videos, and guys, I have so much stored for you. I'm really excited. Um, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel to be able to get access to those. Uh, be sure to also like the video and comment below with any questions or insights that you have share with the community. Uh, we'd all appreciate it. And, um, and yeah, like I said, if you have questions, let us know in the comments or in the Facebook group. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.